As I was saying, we went through this typhoon and we survived, all, all of us survived, and uh, we went into Okinawa in uh, uh, the latter part of July of 45, just before they dropped the bombs, and no one will ever convince me that uh, uh, Truman didn't do the right thing. Uh, I feel very sure right now that myself or any of the others would not be here if he if hadn't dropped the bomb. Excuse me. That's okay. okay we're so young. But uh, uh, we were all in our. Uh, the whole crew, there was only 15 men aboard and uh, one officer, 15 men and one officer, yeah, they're considered men too. And, uh, but we were all uh, very uh, immortal, I almost said immoral, that's not true. But um, we, um, uh, most of us had been through uh, a service school, I was in a, uh, a motor machinist mate school in Navy Pier in Chicago. And then uh, we went down to uh, the amphibious training down in Virginia and Maryland. And then took a, a long train ride to uh, 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 Mare Island, California. And that's where we, we got on the, uh, the Liberty ship to Pearl. But um, also, uh, well, then um, in Okinawa, we were in, a, in the staging area where uh, we were pick up our uh, our load of material or tanks or men, whatever, and uh, we went. We would have gone into the, uh, according to uh, the book I have here that I got from the library, uh, was uh, uh, in Honshu, which is the southern part of Japan, and that would have been the first invasion port, and uh, we were among many others would have landed there. And um, like I say, I'm very thankful that uh, Truman dropped the bomb. Um, I was there um, in December of 45, then I, w I had enough points to come home, and I did, and I, got, I was discharged in Toledo on the 4th of January of 46. And then, um, what else do we want to know? <laughs> well, um, that's pretty good. That's, that um, a, yeah, basically, we're just kind of asking, what did you do day to day? Okay, I was a motor machinist mate, and I, like I say, I had t had my training in Navy Pier in Chicago, and uh, I, the skipper assigned me as uh, the the leading motor machinist mate, which is uh, for an 18 year old was uh, pretty heavy. <laughs> I see now, where I uh, I didn't know a whole lot. Uh, I was the uh, lead ma machinist mate uh, on repair and maintenance and operation of the engines, the diesel engines, and also uh, anything that was mechanical aboard. Now we didn't have a whole lot of, uh, aboard, a whole lot of uh, machinery or parts, but uh, like I say, for an 18 year old, why it was uh, quite an a, uh, assignment. assignment. And uh, uh, I enjoyed that, really, I, I really did. And um, uh, we had um, the skipper, and then there's a gunner's mate, and a electrician, and a boatswain mate, and myself were the, uh, the, the um, uh, WASA, were those who had rates, the rated people. And we had all had uh, schools, and then um, um, we were on watch uh, four hours on, four hours off, which most uh, service are. And uh, there was only two of us in the engine room that took care of the uh, engines. Uh, a fellow by the name of Anderson over in uh, Indianapolis. And I found him, he found me rather, uh, through a website that our, my son-in-law uh, put on the net for me, and then I found the skipper just a few months ago. 
uh, and I had, not, I had not seen him or heard from him in 55 years. And it was quite a pleasant surprise to uh, contact him or he contacted me. And then we have been on the, uh, in the email business for several months now. Really enjoyed it. Um, so did your duties change daily or were you consistently just uh, you know, head of the engines or whatever? Or did you have to kind of wear many hats? during this tour? Well, uh, we helped one another. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly, uh, uh, when we were at uh, uh, General Quarters, I was, my station was in the engine room, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, then on, when we were, weren't at General Quarters and just normally at sea, my, my job primarily was on the throttles of the engines. And uh, uh, the skipper, unfortunately, didn't have much idea of how to handle men nor how to handle a, a ship, and uh, he he taught most of FS teaching. Uh, most of us could handle the ship better than he. There was four of us. Mm -hmm. It's probably going to need a new tape. I think the tape right now. Yeah. You can't, you just open it. Yeah, that one doesn't have nothing to do again. Then we had, uh, we had 16 men aboard, and of course we lived in an area that was probably um, six feet wide and uh, 18 feet long, and there was, all of us slept in that area. Uh, our bunks were three foot high, I mean three tiered high, and uh, of course when you're living that close with uh, all these men, you know them very well, and I knew all the addresses, I had all the addresses. I uh, wrote to them right after I got out of service, and I got answers from about four or five. So we kept in contact, Christmas cards, this type of thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, then uh, um, the last few years, I have uh, attempted to contact them again, and I got very little response, although we do have, uh, I have a gunner's mate friend in uh, Fort Pierce, Florida, and um, one of the, one of the uh, seamen was uh, is in Florida. I met several down there and we had quite a, 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 a gab session uh, about three or four, excuse me, three or four years ago. It was a remember when session. Remember when. We had a lot of fun. We only have one fellow that has died that I, we know of and that was the uh, electrician in Boxy, Mississippi. And uh, uh, the skipper, I was talking to him, he's in good health and uh, he's we're wanting to get together some somehow, that would be great. and we'd enjoy seeing him. Um, okay. that's another question. Um, yeah, um, basically, so you volunteered versus being drafted. I yes, I uh, volunteered. Uh, my brother Richard, who here in Waynesville was uh, studying under Cap Stubbs in a funeral home, and. Uh, he went in in January, July of 41, so I knew that mom would sign for me if I, if I wanted to go in. And I was just a few days uh, short of my 18th birthday, I was actually 17. And uh, uh, yeah, I was awful young, I didn't know what the situation was. But my father was also in, uh, in World War I on minesweepers, and so there wasn't any Sorry. question about, wasn't anything about any question about uh, what we were going to join, and I have two younger brothers that also went in the Navy. That was kind of my next question. So you had siblings that were also in the, yes, in the military, and all of you served in the Navy. All of them in the Navy. All <laughs> in the Navy yes. So I'm assuming being 17, you didn't have a wife and kids at home. No, we did not. <laughs> I, I, I didn't marry until I was quite ancient. Ancient. Oh, quite ancient, yes. huh? Oh, okay. Well, your choice was very good at your ancient age. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We love your wife here at the library. That's great.
That's great. Um, so did you and your siblings ever serve together at all? Were you always at separate ships and separate times? And uh, the only time uh, when I knew, well, let's start over. Okay. My mother and and uh, my brother, older brother, and I had a little uh, secret. Uh, what do I want to say? Um, uh, code, secret code as to where we were. Mm -hmm. Now we, we knew where each other was at, at all times. I knew Dick was on Guam and uh, we were headed that way so I asked the skipper if, uh, if, he, if I could uh, come, go and see him. Well we, we got to Guam and uh, the other uh, personnel off the other ships were getting to go ashore for a few hours. We weren't going to stay there long, I knew that. Knew that. But the skipper changed his mind and he wouldn't let me go. But the, the, uh, uh, at that time we had two officers. The executive officer heard, overheard the conversation. And so he asked me if I would give him my brother's address. And I did. And he says, I'll, go find, I'll see if I can't go find him. Well, sure enough, in about an hour, why, here come Mr. Donahue with, uh, with Dick. And uh, Dick stayed with us uh, until about 6 o'clock that evening. And he had a um, child with us, and uh, he had to go back uh, to make call, make roll call, and he went to uh, Tinian the next day. So uh, that was the only time that I got to see him. Uh, I hadn't seen him in three years, but uh, it was quite a, quite a, uh, uh, a good visit. We enjoyed it. I enjoyed it very much. Um. I'm kind of finishing up what if you could name one thing positive that came out of your military experience what would it be I grew up <laughs> <laughs> yeah I um, I was quite innocent and uh, 17 years old you don't you don't know a whole lot about life and uh, the, uh, the service the personnel and certainly uh, the experiences will will uh, let you grow up or make you grow up in a hurry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, uh, I'm sure that I did that. Okay. Yeah. And if you could uh, say that you had one negative experience or one negative that you brought out with you, what would that be? Or were there any? I always said that if I had two lives lived, one would have been the Navy. <laughs> but <laughs> I only had one life, so I, was, I had to get out. I got out. But. Uh, uh, I, I the positive it was it was to be the experience that I had uh, because right after that after I got out of service I didn't know what I wanted to do and I had two professions one of them was was uh, education the other was engineering and uh, it's right back on the, it's on the hip pocket that you uh, uh, decide what you're going to do and at that time the uh, teachers were making eighteen hundred dollars a year and the um, engineers were making $2,500 a year and I didn't have a choice. I'm not a graduate engineer, but I uh, was at the right place at the right time with the right expertise. Mm -hmm. So you and carried your mechanics training oh, into yes. civilian life? Yes, I did. Okay. Yes. I was on the river for five years, towboating on the river, and that's another story. Oh. But I was on the river for five years and that was an extremely good experience. Mm -hmm. It was much more complicated. The, the uh, engineering on the towboats were much more complicated than what they were on our little ship. Our little ship was only 120 feet long, 30 feet wide, and it was the smallest craft in the Navy that had a crew. Uh, we, did, we had two 20 millimeter guns and uh, we had a couple machine guns and some uh, uh, some rifles and uh, 45s, 45 pistols, and that was our armament. Uh, we, uh, like I say, we weren't intend. We didn't. They didn't intend us to uh, to do any uh, battling, so forth. But there was a a lot of uh, there, there was a Did probably you come under fire? No, I didn't. No, we were uh, at the tail end of the... Typhoon uh, was it. I was going to say, that was quite a firestorm in itself. <laughs> right. The typhoon was the uh, only uh, uh, serious experience we had. Very serious. And uh, uh, we didn't, um, didn't have any problems. We just, we did lose, uh, one of the crew did lose a uh, dog overboard. That's the only thing that we lost overboard, <laughs> which was certainly good.
But, um, let's see, what was that? I lost the train of thought. I'm sorry. <laughs> did, did you name it? Did it have a name? No, it wasn't our ship. It wasn't our, our dog. It was. Uh, no, I mean the, the your your ship. Oh did yes, you name it? yes, I, we I, did. If, you, if you've given it a name, I haven't heard it. I okay. It. The the uh, we named our ship. We named our shepherds. Our we named it the Little Angel. Oh, I like and, that. And uh, that was because our skipper came from a wealthy family, and his sister's name was Angel. And she gave us, she bought us a washing machine and all the sporting equipment we could ever, ever use. Oh and so we gosh. named it. We named it the Little Angel. Oh, and on the dear. on the ready boxes on the uh, on the uh, on the ship, why we had Little Angel. Oh, and uh, that's neat. I on my cap. I don't know whether you've seen my cap or not, but I have uh, the name. I should have brought it in, mm -hmm. and uh, had Little Angel on it. Oh, how terrific! Yeah, we uh, oh, we. Uh, it was the only ship that I know that we had a name. Oh. That we usually have, uh, uh, the air, airmen have uh, nose art, they call it, mm -hmm. on the on the on the nose of their planes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know why we didn't have other names, but uh, we could have had other names for sure. Mm -hmm. on sure. Yeah. But it was a very small, very small. Like I say, it was the smallest uh, piece of equipment in the. Navy that had a crew. Mm -hmm. We had 15 or 16 men aboard. Okay. Um, and basically, in closing, uh, for history's sake, do you have any remarks that you would like to make? Anything that you would like to say for the sake of posterity about your time in service? <laughs> well, uh, I, I, if you can enjoy your service time, why well, I enjoyed my service time. I was never, not in combat. I was not in combat. It, it'll make a, a man out of you in a hurry. It'll, it'll mature you in a hurry. And uh, I, it did me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I appreciated the fact that I was able to go into the Navy. Yes. That's good. Thank you, Joe. Mm -hmm. That's very nice. This is the, uh, the remnants of a, uh, the ensign that we had aboard our ship during the typhoon. Uh, when they when we replaced it, why well, I asked to have it, I asked to have it, and somebody says, well, "What do you want that thing for?" And I said, "Well, I'll just I'll just take that for posterity," and that is the uh, the remnants of our uh, our ensign. And then uh, I have this one came from Wakayama, Japan. Now I didn't I didn't requisition this. This is I didn't uh, <laughs> confiscate this, mm -hmm. but. Uh, uh, obviously, it was on a pole because it's got the, the tabs on the side. It was on a pole, and you know, 55 years, I, I still don't know <laughs> how I got it. Like I say, I, I'm sure I didn't confiscate it, but uh, it, uh, it's a memorabilia, too. That's great. Yeah. Terrific.